Hey guys. guys, welcome back to the Jab Tea Podcast. Welcome back to another episode coming to you from a van somewhere in Utah. In in specific, the Jadley van. Woo! We call it the Jadley van, yeah. We call it the, the magic school bus carrying Jadley. That's what we call it. It has to be a pretty strong van to carry some of us, so not going to name anyone in particular. Yeah. Guys, literally funny story. So right now, when we parked, Jake got off of the van, and it immediately grew like two inches. So <laughs> this man was weighing the van down. We have to order a lifted van in order for it to be leveled height once I get in. <laughs> <laughs> no, welcome back though, guys. I hope you guys uh, have been missing us. It's been a week since we posted, or like not posted. Um, it's just because we've been on the road. We've been like up and out of fucking like outer space and stuff, working. Yeah, it's because we missed last week. Because obviously, to get on this trip, we had to prep for this trip, and it was chaos. It was yeah, a lot was going on. You guys probably saw that video on my channel, or if you haven't, keep an eye out for it because it's going up. It's literally being uploaded like as we speak. I see it going up. So. You're going to be able to see that prep, but it doesn't really emphasize. I tried to record a lot of it, but there's so much missing. Like in between that video, you'll see like I did. It was three days of prep, but the other two days that I didn't film, it was Easter. So we did an entire road trip to Bakersfield, which is like two and a half hours. We drove two and a half hours to Bakersfield, did Easter for like three, four hours, and then drove back the same night because the next morning we had to finish packing because we were going to leave at 5 a.m. 4 a.m. We left at 4 a.m. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's just like craziness. Friday, the most exciting thing happened ever, which you guys are gonna find about find out about in as soon as I get back, which will be next. It's it's next like week. isn't it so hard to like have stuff filmed, but you have to keep it a secret because of the chronological order you have to post. That's things what in. it is. Yeah, like I have to post the van videos first because if not, it's just not gonna make sense. It's, and it's, it's gonna sucks. be like a random ass video and then van life all of a sudden. I know, and I'm and trying to make it in chronicle. You know what I'm talking like, about. Like, say you post a van life video, it just takes away from the other video, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so crazy, but we've been on the go, and what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something right now. Um, oh, it also takes a lot of time like to think out things, like research where you want to go, and I feel like a lot of that into the whole week we were busy was that, like researching. Yeah, because van life it has been a trip. And I'm so excited to get into this episode because we are going to tell you guys everything. Like basically all of the BTS that you're not going to see in the vlogs. Because that's kind of how we like to do the podcast. Is like everything that's not in the vlogs is in the podcast. So you get like the full feel. Literally, yeah, yeah. But we were also like March. Dude, March, we were very, very slow. We wanted to take like a little rest, like a little break, just a little one because we still posted a couple times. But I think that like mentally prepared us for what's about to happen in the next month, two months. And like in the summer, dude, we're going to be active, like super, super active. We literally, you guys won't even believe it, but we have, because I think our content has slowly been transitioning just a little bit. And I think I had a good balance because we still do like, I still do my Sunday resets and my day in my life and my globes and that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I feel like, trying to shift it a little bit so you guys don't get tired of the same thing like over and over and over again so i think we're trying to shift it and also for jadley like for jadley it's really hard to film because it's like a couple's channel but like you don't want to do the day in my life because you guys can already see that on our own channels and that's another thing that i like so i watch like a couple different youtubers right but i watch yeah. each of the youtubers for different reasons like for example i watch loaf to get like the funny content in public i watch um mr beast to get those cinematic shots and stuff like whatever and then like travel youtubers right but we I feel like we incorporate all of that into one channel or like our across our, all of our channels. So whenever someone wants to watch a certain video, they have right. it right there on that specific channel. Yeah. It's not just like, all right, I'm going to watch Jadley because they do cute couple stuff. Like we also do travel. We also do lifestyle. We go visit our family, have vacation, stuff like that. Yeah. And I feel like for Jadley, I just, we don't want it to be like the same thing as our channel. So like it's, it's hard to find what genre we want to put Jadley in. So it's, yeah, it's been a, it's been a mission. Isn't that interesting? Let's talk about that a little bit more. Like it's interesting. Like say we were an artist. If a record label wanted to sign us, what label would they put us in? That's for Jadley? Yeah. I don't know because I don't think we fall under like the cute couples. Like the, what is it? The dream? No, you know those couples that go viral for being so cute? It was more back I think, in the day. I think we did that already though. We, we, did, we did. Yeah, we did. Right? We did that back. But like now, I don't think we fit under that. I also don't think we fit under like pranks, jokes, yeah. uh, skits. Mm -hmm. We don't do any of that. So I don't think we fit under there. And then we don't travel enough to be a travel couple. So we're not travel. I think recently we have been becoming that more though. I think we're hitting more to like, I think a lifestyle is the best way that you would put it. Like I think we do a pretty good job at doing like lifestyle. Like our life at home, our life with family, our life traveling, you know, our bickering and... 
I thought that was a cup. <laughs> oh my gosh, talking about all that. Anyway, yeah, so it's. I think we're like in a yeah, good... We do a good job bringing in everything into one channel. Yeah, but I think lately we've been trying to do things just a little bit different because I feel like I get so many of you guys that have not traveled before and I totally get it because when you've never traveled before, like you just want to see other people travel because you get to live through them. And obviously, like... Growing up as someone that did not travel at all, like, we literally didn't leave the state of California up until I was maybe, like, I don't know, old. Like, we wouldn't 17, travel. 17, 18? Yeah, I think until I left. I went, I think, out of the country, except for, well, I went to Mexico one time in my entire life. And then after that, like, it was for, like, two days. And after that, I never left the country. I didn't know anything about airports. I didn't know anything about we basically learned how to travel together. I think you should create a staple video. Like, you know the staple? Okay, I feel like right now you only have one staple video on your personal channel, and that's your BBL video. BBL. Because <laughs> that video has, bro, so many views because when you search up a BBL, that video is going to come up, right? Yeah. But you search up how to travel. I think those are the very important staple videos that people need to watch and I think we've from. learned so much that I think we will do a travel podcast sometime in the next year or two because we've learned so much. We've been traveling for, what, three years now? Yeah. Yeah, we've been traveling for three years, so we know a lot now that, you know, I think could help a lot of people. That's literally what I was talking to my family about was like, you guys need to travel with us because we know how to travel so good. Like we've learned how to travel pretty good. And there's a certain way to travel to a maximize resources and all, and, and then really have a fun time. And I think that once you figure out the code on how to travel, then, and I don't think I have it fully because I watch a lot of travel hacks, travel guides, like how to use points. Like I, I'm fully into that. Like I really look into all that. But I think we still have some learning to do. So once I feel like I know enough to share it with you guys, we'll get to that point. Uh, but. Yeah. But, dude, we're here. It's 2024. Yeah. I'm with my girlfriend in, in a Salt Lake City, Utah. In a random ass park filming a podcast. Guys, <laughs> we are. So are you ready to get into? Let's, let's get into the beginning of the days. Okay. Let's get started on van life. So dun, dun, dun. <laughs> today is day four of our of our van life, correct? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yes. Okay, so today is day four. We're going to bring you back to day day zero slash day one. No, let's start at day zero, the planning. So we have been looking at, well, specifically, I think, no, we. We both have always thought about it. I've always had van life on, like, I literally have it on my mood board, on my vision board. Like, I've always seen the aesthetic van life, you know, Pinterest boards with the pretty leaves and the lights and the van pulled up on the edge of the beach. Like, I've always, always seen it, right? And I've always wanted to try it because... The thing is that I feel like 90% of the things on the internet are very overhyped. Like, that's just the way it is. And it's fine. That's, you know. But I, this just seemed like such a fun thing because it's like you're traveling, but you're not in airports, you know, that kind of travel. It's a very, like, you can go and do whatever you want. So I've always wanted to do it. And then me and Jake recently, like, together got into it. Like, we were really looking into it and, like, seeing vans and seeing, like, how to build a van and how to run a van because there's so many controls in here. Like, you don't want to blow up, so there's just so much you got to know about it. And we've been, like, really looking into it, and then I finally was like, I'm going to do it. So I booked it. <laughs> and, like, three, and day, three weeks and a half? Yeah, yeah, you did a lot of research on, do, on like, looking for, like, the perfect van the that will fit van. your style and fit the, like, aesthetic uh, Etsy photos. Yeah, and I wanted to have enough oh, no, no. space. I said Etsy. What is it? No, Pinterest. Pinterest. Sorry. And I couldn't, so I was looking around, like, the L.A. area, and I couldn't find a van company that I loved, so we found one in Sacramento. So we had to fly to Sacramento to get the damn van. It was this whole freaking mission, but we I had booked it, and I was like, I think this is going to be good. Like, And it also, for the record, vans are really expensive, so it's this is, like, luxury for sure. Luxury travel to the like literally to the brim like this is very expensive what we are in right now yeah what we're in yes now if you were to maybe own your own van and it be a older van maybe less luxurious i do think that that would be more you know affordable but what we're in right now very pricey i think it was like 200 dollars a night or something like that wow which is i mean that's like an airbnb a hotel but this is so much better because you get to move around. Okay, you kind of flew over the point of the of the travel. So let me oh, go, sorry, go let me it. let me backtrack a little bit. Go for it. So we were we were between like one of two plans, like fly straight to Sacramento or get a cheaper flight and fly to another uh, another place, get a layover flight to go to Sacramento. And that's what we did. So we ended up going from our airport to what is Phoenix. it? Phoenix. 
to Phoenix Airport and then from Phoenix Airport to the Sacramento Airport. Yes. So <laughs> there was a two hour layover and dude, it was a six and a half hour travel time when we could have quite literally flew one hour and got Sacramento. <laughs> it was a waste of a day. <laughs> mm. But it didn't matter because we couldn't pick up the van till three. And we saved a good buck by flying to Phoenix and then to Sacramento. Yep. You know, it helped. It just worked. Because imagine we would have flew to Sacramento at like, I don't know, let's say at 12, get there at 1. Yeah, we could have saved more time, but like we could have all, we saved like 200 bucks. I feel like people assume that since like we have we have money, uh, then we don't need to save. But I think it's very important to like still save while you can, you know. Like, well, yeah, like when you're renting out a van, that's literally like $200 a day, right? Um, you can use saving two hundred dollars on a flight by simply being inconvenienced for five hours. I mean, there you go, free night, girl math. That's a free night, you know. So it just works. And yeah, I think we always try to find little ways to save and hack and. But now that we've like we really looked into uh, our finances and like our future goals, I feel like saving. 10, five, 10 bucks is, is very important because that 10 bucks, five, 10 bucks uh, goes to a coffee, you know? And then yeah. over time, bro, within the whole year, up. dude, the coffee money adds up. I don't spend that much money on coffee anymore. No, she doesn't. Speaking about coffee. <laughs> okay, you guys are going to be like in shock. Within the past hour, we've gotten this many coffees. One. Two. I'm and not done, by the way. Good. I'm not done, by the way. Three. Three. And they're all so good. We're drinking literally all of them. And then we're in Utah, so we had to try the famous swig. <laughs> we soda. got my, my cream soda. That thing was really good, by the way. Mm. With the little balls. If you're curious on what flavor I got, I know there's like a Dr. Pepper one that everyone was going crazy over, but I don't know. I didn't. I don't like dark soda, so I got a pot and pineapple. Shout out to all the Utah, Utanians. What is a Utah person Utanians? called? Utanians? Yeah, what's a Utah person Be called? For real, babe. I don't think it's Utanians. Shout out to my Utopians. Utopians. <laughs> no, we love Utah. Right. We, it has been. So we started this adventure Tuesday and then we went from California all the way to Utah. So we had to cross from Sacramento. We went into Nevada. Nah. We stayed in, in Reno. Okay, okay, okay. We stayed sorry. in Reno for a night and then we crossed all the way over to Utah. It was, was like a six hour drive. And then we <laughs> stayed at the entrance of Utah <laughs> for a night. And then we crossed all the way into. So, we no, went. No. Through Salt Lake all the way up north, stayed at an alpaca farm up there, which was super cool, by the way. We'll get into that a little bit in a little while. Super cool. Went up north, and then now we're, like, actually in Salt Lake, and we've just been visiting, like, really cool stuff. We want to go to East High. We want to do all of the we wanna go to Antelope Island. East High is the high school musical, uh, high yeah. school musical high school. So cool. And they have, like, self-guided tours every day from, like, 3.30 to 7 p.m. or something like that. And I'm so excited to go. That's such an iconic thing to do. But I don't know. I feel like Utah is like, it's like the relationship you have with your younger sibling. You love them, but you hate them. What do you hate about them? I hate the wind. I think it's the time that we're here for sure. But nah, because I don't know. Anytime you drive in California, the wind is never this bad. Um, If you're in Lancaster, it is. You're right. Yeah. But yeah, the wind is insane. I think like 50 mile per hour winds as I'm driving 80 miles per no, hour, 70 miles per scary, hour. No, it was scary, guys. Like we were really scared. I think that's like, no, I was going to say the worst conditions we've driven in, but no, I think the Washington worst. was the worst. No, no, it was Colorado. Was it Colorado? Yeah, it was Colorado. Oh my god. The worst conditions I've ever driven in, I think was Colorado, dude. No, but this is pretty uh, bad. Jake, for your average person, this is this was horrible. Like it was our a workout, was yeah. Like, it was a workout holding the, the steering wheel super hard, and then you randomly get a gust of wind going one direction. You have to put your wheel to the other sure direction. It's for sure the van, too, though. I, something about because it. Because it's super tall. I think because of the van, it's super tall. Oh. The wind's just, like, knocking it and knocking it over. Yeah, it was really it, it was really scary. But, honestly, we went through it, and, like, still today, it was raining. Is it still raining? I it's, don't think it's, it's raining anymore. It's sprinkling just a little bit, but I'm glad I'm going through this right now because I feel like when I'm older and we have kids and stuff, like, I'd rather be the one in control oh, yeah. than, you know, letting them find out or <laughs> them doing the YouTube videos. Yeah, you're for sure, like, I'm investing in you so much. I love it. <laughs> this is my little investment right here. <laughs> it's so cool. Dude, he has gotten than, so good. I'm better than S&P 500, for real. He has literally gotten so good at, like, pretty much everything. Like, I, I, You know what? I also feel like a lot of girls do, like, they don't see the bright side in, in their boyfriends, you know? There's people outside. They could probably hear us. But they don't see the bright side in their boyfriend for the most part. Because I, I remember there was a girl that commented, like, how do you become, I mean, how are you so patient with them? How are you so patient and stuff? But I honestly think if you truly love the person, that you have to be patient in oh, order to, for like, them to. like, stick with you? Yeah, in order for them to grow as well. Well, 
But it also I depends. don't have patience though. So it was a rocky. It was a rocky. I, yeah, I also think that was a big factor because I love you so much to where like I know where your patient level is like out. Like you don't have any patience anymore. So. Golden Retriever, two Golden Retrievers. Oh my gosh! Oh. All right, thank you for watching today's podcast. We're gonna go play with the Golden Retrievers. Look at they're so fluffy and they're off leash. We're gonna go pet them. Hurry, hurry! Let's finish the podcast. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god! Oh, pee. he's peeing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, um. Since I seen that she doesn't have patience, I'm like, bro, how could I better myself? And I'm not, I'm just like thinking, constantly thinking, like, why am I not clicking this fast? And still to this day, like, I truly think something's going on in my brain where things aren't clicking. This no, quick. but you've gotten so much better at like everything. I am so glad that I trusted the process because it is hard. Like, it is really, really hard to be with someone who, you know, it's take. They don't. They're like newer to the world. It feels like a little bit. Oh yeah, because I was the youngest sibling to compared to where you're the oldest sibling in your family. Yeah, it's a little hard, and especially. It, you get a lot. You get frustrated really fast, you know. Especially him being the look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're leaving. No. No. It, yeah, it is really, really hard. Especially because you're a guy. I think if like the girl, it, and it sucks because it's like stereotypes and all that kind of to stuff. To be honest, I feel like it would be harder. Like it would be harder for me if there was a girl. Well, yeah. Sam, no, 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 no. Sam's smart. <laughs> Sam's smart. Okay. But if the girl is like less knowledgeable than I am, dude. Okay. See, do you get it now? No, 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 no. But I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 exactly it's a double the same. standard I have set for myself, but no, it's exactly the same thing. So it's a, it's a hard thing mm -hmm. because you have to be very patient because you love this person, but it's like, come on, you know, and, but for the record, we met really young. So that was a huge thing because now you're 21. Yeah. You were my first girlfriend. So I didn't really know how to do stuff. Like I was preparing myself just to like go to college and study. I wasn't going to prepare myself to make sure I have the house hold down, like hold down the house and stuff. At you 20, know? yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't ready for it for it's sure. Also, it's also, it was not, I'm not saying rush, but it was like a little quicker than most people, you know? Yeah. We live, a, we, we had a very unique kind of relationship. But yeah, I do, like I understand and I feel for all the girls that feel that way with their man and I totally get it. And it's hard. We just have to trust the process. But at the same time, if they're not putting, you know, their five cents to really try and change and better themselves. And at the same time, it's like, it's really not worth your time. It, it really isn't. But I think it's all a process, babe. I feel like I was expecting too much of you when you were 17. I was expecting you to be a lot, you know, more. But looking back, I'm like, bro, I couldn't do simple stuff. Yeah. I couldn't do simple stuff. I know. But, you know, you were young and you're a boy and you're the youngest sibling. I see why, you know, all the factors that were there and stuff like that. And for the record, like usually it's just the situation that you were in like most kids of parents that you know don't speak the language and you know all that kind of stuff like they're just a lot faster because they're forced to be fast exactly you don't yeah. have another choice you mm -hmm. know what i mean being an older sibling you're forced to be faster because you have to, you know it's a whole thing but i think you were just in a unique situation but we made it through and then obviously there's still so much to be worked with like you helped me so much to be a nicer person to be more patient like i needed that a lot so i think we've both just grown and it's crazy because like things like this i feel like every trip has really tested our relation now now not anymore but at the beginning like the first trips were hard and they, like were. they would test the shit out of our relationship if we tried to do a van life trip at year two years, one two, or two years, years ago, ago oh like we would goodness. be we would have broke up right the dishes there. would be like piled up i would be in the passenger seat she i would want her to drive yeah it, it would have been the end of our relationship for sure so it's, it's crazy huh where we are now it is so freaking crazy but anyway van life has been amazing okay it has yeah it's been so much fun so we started on day zero we haven't got to day one we haven't gotten to day one of van life yet Let's just run over all the struggles that we have. Okay, on the count of three, say a struggle, a van life that you didn't think was going to be a struggle, but it is a struggle. Ready? One, two, three. Parking. Parking. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Oh, my gosh. The things they don't tell you. I, I don't know. I don't think people, like YouTubers, put this in, but we're putting it in because this is the entire title of the video or podcast that you're listening to. Parking is the legit hardest thing about van life in our opinion and here's yeah. why you go on websites and try to find parking near you like okay we're budget parking by no the way. okay first of all you can't just pull up and park anywhere okay that's step one that's true you can't go to a park and sleep at the park well technically you can but you just gonna get kicked out yeah i mean you might get away with it right but i just it depends how like guarded your park is i'm gonna guess but for the most part like you can't just do that. You have to be, like, allowed to do it. You know, and you can't just pull up to Walmart and sleep in the parking lot unless the Walmart allows it. But, like, they've cracked down on pretty much every Walmart already. So you can't do that. And then also, the cool part about, like, being in a parking lot like that is because it's lit up. 
But, you know, and I mean, you could maybe sleep at a gym because technically a 24 hour gym, you could, you know, you could just be in the gym. They'll never know. You're pre gaming. I'm, yeah. putting my, I'm drinking my pre workout. My bad, officer. What's up? <laughs> yeah, like you could maybe get away with that. But again, you're not supposed to. There's just so many rules and stuff like that. You can't just stay, like, you can't park in a residential street, although it is legal technically to leave your car parked, you know, on the street or whatever. Like, it, you also don't want to just be parked anywhere because you're literally asleep in this car and breaking into a car is not that hard and it, it's just a whole thing and we didn't know about that and there's also like if you're gonna sleep at there's certain land where you can like stop at i don't remember what the specifics of it is but there's certain land that's like owned by nobody or owned by like the state or something like that where you can sleep like some sort oh, of it's national like free forest. for all kind of yeah some stuff like but then do you really want to be in like butt fuck nowhere, no signal, no one around, sleeping in your car. Like it's just more of a safety issue that we've you know stumbled across. I know. I think I've listened. I've listened to enough Stephanie Sue podcasts, like Ron Mingo podcasts, yeah. to where I've heard the endings of these stories. So I'm like, mm. yes, and, it, and that's crazy. It's the safety thing. I think is the hardest thing that we've <laughs> been going through. And night one was so rough because okay, there's apps that you can use. Okay, here's the insider. There's apps that you can use that basically there's people that will let you park in their like farms and their, you know, their retail parking spaces, you know, whatever. But, but here comes the thing. If the place isn't in a very secure area, like where we were night one, we were in like not the best part of Reno in Nevada. And oh my gosh, that literally we were like getting ready to go to sleep and this guy, it, it, like, people were coming up to the van. Like, you could hear, like, people talking and they were not doing good things. Like, speeding around us. It was so fucking scary. So, I was laying in bed and I was doing her nighttime routine. And I'm like, look, like, I didn't tell you this, but, like, I was falling asleep. Like, you know what? I don't know what, how to explain it, but it's like you're laying down and it's your rest mode. But you hear stuff. You could still, you could still hear and process but you're sleeping, okay? I was in that part of my sleep. So I'm like, I hear Nat doing her makeup routine here, and they're like, the, like everything closed and stuff, and I zip up. And then all of a sudden, I hear, I'm peeking through your window, I can see you, or something like that. I don't know what, exactly what he said. He's like, I see you. And then he's walking around, like, you can hear him, his voice, like, going closer, closer, and then farther, and then closer, closer again. And he's like, You got your window cracked open, I'm peeking. Yeah. And I was like, What the heck? And I, I immediately, I woke up, I'm like, Am I tripping? Is that my dream or is that real? And now I was like, oh. like she was shocked and scared. And yeah. I'm, I turned off all the lights right then and there. Like I shut them off and I was like. And the only safety I have at the moment is a kitchen knife. A kitchen knife that's not even sharp. That piece of fuck doesn't even cut tomatoes. <laughs> I was so mad. So yeah, we had a kitchen knife though. That's the only, and like the only thing. I didn't buy a pocket knife because we just got into the state. I was like, oh shoot, what are we going to do? So I was thankfully Thankfully, thankfully, we have connects to where we got um, in contact with a friend. Shout out to Alex, a.k.a. Bless him. Dude, he saved our life. So I was like, bro, I'm in Reno doing van life. Don't ask, but would your mom be mad if we parked in her driveway? He's like, bro, uh, go ahead, do it. Do whatever you want. Uh, yeah. I'm going to call her up right now. She said yes. And then she said yes, dude. She's the most nicest person in the world. Yeah. We ended up parking in her driveway. <laughs> <laughs> like in the safest neighborhood in the entire world, bro. And I was like. Wow, because we had to get out of the neighborhood we were in. It was super scary and scary. For the record, it was like a place where, what is it, a brewery? Like where they sell beer and stuff? So like imagine the drunks there, like everything. Dude, it was so bad. And like going into it, so this is night one, dude. We are freaking traumatized. Like we have no clue of anything. We're, we're literally traumatized. And it was a rough start. Now, you know, we figured it out, I think, for the most part. And now we've stuck to farms so we're out of the city we're not staying in the city anymore like we are staying in very rural areas because <laughs> it's just safer that way so honestly we loved it because at the farms they'll sell like basically the way it works is you get to sleep in their land for free and then you have to buy something so at these farms they'll sell their goods like chicken eggs and all kinds of stuff and then you buy from them and get to sleep, but they're all super nice. Like yesterday, we got a whole tour. We got to meet a bunch of alpacas. Like it was so much fun. <laughs> alpacas are are like little kids, literally, bro. Yeah. They were fighting each other, like wrestling, putting their necks on each other, and spitting at each other. I was like, oh no way. Yeah. And then we we're entering the like the uh, so he keeps the 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 young boys away from like the uh, the grown males because I guess like the males are like too 
too masculine. So they they yeah, like fight. they push him around. So he has the young males, and as soon as I'm walking up, you could tell they're like high schoolers, bro. I know. They're like they're just looking at me, and then they just spit. They go. They were spitting at Jay. I was like, what the hell did I do? <laughs> it was so cool. We got to meet so many like farm animals. It was a bunch of chickens. We literally woke up to roosters. Like it was so <laughs> it was, crazy. It was so cool. It was awesome. And today we're gonna be staying at another farm, which di- different animals, and I'm so excited. But if you live in Salt Lake City, you want to let us sleep in your neighborhood, please let us know because I would love to sleep there on Sunday. Please. please. We don't even have to be in your driveway. We just have to be like in front of your house and you have to say that it's it's your like, car. Like actually text us, please. Like please, like we will we'll just pull up to the front. Just let, please a safe neighborhood. Let, let us, <laughs> on nine miles, say something out of pocket stuff. Please, just like <laughs> let us be in the front. We'll sleep and we'll be out because we do need somewhere to sleep on Sunday that I don't have anything booked. And it's going to snow here in Salt Lake City tomorrow. And our car is in 4x4, so we need to be, like, out of the city and then come back. But Sunday, I'm going to do a whole Sunday reset of the van. So I basically need somewhere to sleep. So please, <laughs> please let me sleep at your house. Uh, I would offer Nat's coffee, but to be honest, we don't have any coffee makers here. No. So uh, uh, I'll bring you I'll bring you one of these. I'll bring you a Joe, Joe Malone coffee. Joe Malone, bitch. This is uh, uh, Roots Coffee. Best coffee in town for real. It's so what's, good. What's the other Joe one? Java Joe. Oh, I'll bring Java you some Java Joe's. Joe. Java Joe's is very good too. Very, very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it has been such a such a vibe. And honestly, this has to be like on my top trips. I think we say that every time, but ah, it's, it's up there. Real. It's up there because okay. the views you go on the freeway now, it's like rural areas and stuff with full full of horses, full of cows and cattle. Okay, what are your top three trips we've done in our entire life? Oh my goodness. Top three. Okay, number one is it has to be Aruba. Aruba is number See, one. See, for me, it isn't. Why? I didn't have a fun time in Aruba. No, yeah. no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Let me f- rephrase that. I wasn't, I didn't have like, a, I feel like I would love to go back to Aruba and redo it because we, we weren't good our, at planning. It was our first trip ever. Okay. We got delayed in the airport. So we had to sleep in Miami and like our flight left I us. For- See, I forgot about that. I didn't I don't even remember. It was so bad, you guys. Like we literally, we were supposed to be in Aruba like two days before, but we weren't able to get there because of the flight cancellations. So was, we missed our flights. It was also during COVID. So you had to do like the COVID stuff, like the, oh the regulations, make sure you had your, your negative test two days before your flight. It was so bad. And like, it was just a hard trip for sure. Like, and then we missed like so many of our excursions because we missed two days because of the flight being canceled. And that was, it was horrible. And then coming back, the airport at Aruba coming back, they literally held us there for hours. So we almost missed our flight. Remember we ran yeah, and do. the lady opened the door for us. It was just like hard for sure. Yeah. Really you hard. see, I forgot all of that. Like everything. What I remember is like the white sand clear crystal clear blue water the bright fish you jump in the water you we were snorkeling with the fish you know what you're right i think i forgot all and then also we were really young so remember everyone was looking at us weird do you remember that dude yeah everyone was like why are y'all See, that's here? what i remember but i wish i could go back and do it because aruba had i think the prettiest beach that we've ever been to flamingo island oh yeah they had like a man-made beach called flamingo island it takes you like a little boat into from a hotel it takes you all the way to like the little island it was yeah perfect. i would love to go back to aruba actually we should go back to aruba because now that we know how to do things it would be awesome and then now that there's no covid it would be really awesome and i was had my extensions in and i was fucking miserable oh yeah no but top top three so yours aruba. okay so it would be aruba colorado because colorado we did a bunch of snowboarding okay and then so f- so far utah the like van this, life the van life yeah, for me, it's Seattle, van life, and the fall Vermont trip. No, no, Australia. Whoa, how did I miss Australia? Australia. Oh, shoot. Okay, okay, I yeah. would have to take out Aruba. I'll take out Aruba for Australia. for Australia. So Australia is number one, and then the other two. I don't remember what I said. Yeah, but fall trip was beautiful. Fall trip was beautiful, but I lost my phone there. <laughs> oh, you're right. But fall trip, fall trip would be fourth for sure. It would be right under. Hey, look at. Oh, no, I thought that they were also there. Yeah, but those, I think van life has been for sure up there with the trips. And it's it's super cool because we literally get to go anywhere. Like, our whole life is in this van. So, like, if we wanted to go, I don't know, we could go anywhere. And it's with us. And it's crazy because we've literally been to so many states. Like, we're going to be in Idaho in a few days. Like, and then we're going to be in Oregon in a few days. So, so it's so crazy. If you live in Idaho, you want to text us where to go eat, where to get the best coffee, let us know. Yes, please message us. But that's our next stop. <laughs> if you, if you have a potato, no, no, I'm being for like if you have a potato farm in Idaho and you want to give us a tour, is it in season? I think potatoes are always in season. Babe, for real? I swear for like Idaho- bananas. Oh, are bananas always in season? I think so. 
mm, I don't want to talk about seasons again. Every time we talk about seasons, I think of salt and pepper. Every single time, but but yeah, if you have a uh, uh, if you have a potato farm, let us know, dude. We would love to pull up. We would love to go tour your potato farm. That'd be so cool, actually. Or if you have something different too, like I don't know, we're we're very like excited people to to see like new things. I know, and like we can, we just feel very free. I wish I had my girls here. If my girls were here, this would be perfect. I think that's our number one regret because we were super scared of like okay. Originally, the plan was to go to national parks, go and visit them, and that's the reason why we weren't gonna take the dogs, right, dude. I apparently you can't even vlog in national parks. You can't bring a camera and stuff like that. You, that's the entire reason Dude, why. this is how greedy the U.S. is. Okay, are you ready to hear this? Let's hear it. If you want to go to a national park and film a TikTok or take an Instagram picture, you can't. You need a permit. How much is a permit? Oh, it's not even about the money, which it is a lot of money. I believe it's like 200 for the application. You could be denied. <laughs> but it's not even just that, dude. Like the so You have to print something out. You have to basically mail your money and then do an online application and then do that. And you have to wait for it to be mailed back to you. It's like a whole process. And then you have to do this like a month in advance, which, again, it's just not realistic. And... You don't even, and on there, it'll tell you, like, how much equipment are you going to need? How many people are coming? Like, bro, I'm literally filming a fucking vlog. Like, I'm not filming a movie. <laughs> and it's crazy because this, literally, this rule got overturned, right? It got overturned in 2022 or 2021. And because somebody sued, like, a vlogger was getting, was suing back because basically he was saying that all he was doing was just, like, vlogging and they're basically being assholes. So he won the case. So he got, like, for a while, it was, like, for a year that you could go and film at national parks. And we're not even talking about drones. We're just simply talking about going on a hike and filming it for you guys. That, that That's it, right? And they overturned it again because they're so fucking greedy that if you literally want to go to a national park and just film a come to a national park with me on TikTok, no, you can't do that. You have to do get a permit, which will take you a month to get. And if you get denied, then you sorry. You lose your money and you get denied. And, and it's like a whole thing. Like they literally, they, they're acting like you're getting a damn passport, dude. It's so crazy and it sucks so bad. And there's a whole like thing going on. There's a bunch of vloggers who are like trying to get petitions for it and because it just sucks. It's like we're not making a movie. Like, we're not even taking a crew to film. If anything, <laughs> we would be boosting an economy to help with the national parks. I mean, people to go That's to the national parks. But you know what it is? Because they know that we're making money off of that video. They want their cut. And I'm so sick and tired of this system because... What if people aren't making money? They just want to go do a vlog. So if you're not making money... You don't have to get a permit. But hear me out. When you sign up for Instagram and Facebook and all these apps, right? When you hit those terms and conditions, you're actually allowing that the platform to make money with your content. So guess what? If you want to just post an Instagram picture, you can't. <laughs> Obviously, people still do it, but you're not supposed to. Bro, that's so it's dumb. It's so crazy. So that's the reason why we didn't go to national parks. It's because, like, if we can't film for you guys, what's the point? You know? There's no point because... That would just be like a chill time for us, but we're here to work. So, yeah, that is why we're not going to national parks. We had a whole plan of going to like um, Moab and going to the Arches National Park and Zion and all these other places, but it all got canceled. And so now we're just going from farm to farm to farm. <laughs> so far, every single day that we've been here, we could have brought, uh, brought in our dogs. Like our dogs would have been fine yeah. every single place we've been at. But because we thought, because also national parks don't let you bring any kinds of animals. I mean, there's like a few. No, actually, I don't think there is any. Like most of national parks, you can't take a pet. Most. So it just sucks. I wouldn't take my pet to a national park either, though. Because imagine like a wildlife comes up to your dog. Your dog doesn't know how to act. Like, Thea, what do you mean? Like, what if, what if uh, Ellie wants to start barking back at it? Or Thea wants to run off and she runs in the bushes and then the, the animal chases the Ellie or Thea, you know? Like, I'm just scared. But we take them hiking. It's the same thing. Are you saying national parks have more stuff? I think national parks are more like scarce, I guess, I guess or like protected to where they're not um, constantly hiked as much as like. Oh, okay. I, see I don't know. That's my my assumption. Yeah. But yeah, so that is the reason why we kind of like moved our trip a little bit. But it's fine because we're still having so much fun and we're going to basically do an entire tour. And we are fully self-sufficient. We pee in here. We shower in here. We sleep in here. We cook in here. We drive in here. We sleep in here. I think I said that, right? Did you? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have all of our clothes in here. We have a garage where we have like lounge chairs and a camping stove. And we have a heater in case it gets too cold tonight. Tell, which... them, tell them what video you're doing. What? About the, the clothes and stuff. 
Oh, I told them a Sunday reset. Oh, you told them already? Yeah, I'm going to do a whole Sunday reset <laughs> yeah. where we have to go, you know, do laundry. I'm going to go to a gym to take a full-on hair shower because I have not had one of those. Oh, that's nasty. What do you mean that's nasty? Uh... <laughs> Your body's the one that gets dirty. You can shower right here. I can't, babe. I will get the whole tank ran out if I start washing my hair in here. Okay. I have to do a hair mask? Come on, man. <laughs> this bougie ass girl. So, or I'm going to go to the if, gym. If I walk into a gym and I see like a girl with her whole whey products, the Kristen, what is it, Kristen? S. Kristen S. products. Why the hell is she in the freaking do gym doing this? And also, I can't run my Dyson Air app in here because I'll blow a fuse, so I have to go to a gym to do it. <laughs> so that's another reason I haven't washed my hair was because I can't blow dry it in here. I want to see you go to the gym to do all this stuff. Yeah, I'm going to film it for my vlog. I don't think you're going to do it. Why not? I, I need don't, to wash my hair. I don't see you doing it. Why not? I don't know. I have to. But I'll probably just film on my phone because you know how there's other oh, girls in okay, there. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I see you doing that. Yeah, and so there's a whole control here, which we can see how much our power is at. We can turn lights on, turn them off. We have um, propane in here, which basically runs our water heater. It'll run our stove. Um, it'll run our, sh our hot water in the shower. By the way, I still need to dump our toilet. Our toilet is about to get filled. And then our gray water tank is about to fill uh, as well. So yeah. we need to fill more water and empty out a whole bunch of our tanks. It's a whole, a whole thing, but... It's we, pretty cool because we're self-sufficient everywhere we go. We have uh -huh. a fridge in here. Yeah, there's a fridge right below you guys. It's still cool. We have our groceries in there, our our farm eggs that we got yesterday. Yeah, we have everything in here. Like in the back, they have first aid kits. Like you're very self-sufficient in this van. It's like a little house. Actually, we have a fan at the top. So when we're cooking, get the get Jake's farts out. It, it honestly feels like our townhouse, right? It. I think because we're so used to... Minimal space. Yeah. Which is a lot. It's a lot of space for us, but like in our, our brains. Our townhome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just two people. Yeah, I mean, it is. But we, cause since we don't have like a, a house house, it doesn't feel like it's big because it's all split. Like the first floor, we have a walkway and that's it. We Second also floor, have, we have a major, I mean, by, by me, I, I mean, by we, I mean, she has a major hoarding issue. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, you do. How? You had expired makeup. Why'd you watch my vlog? And then, and then there's still makeup in my bathroom, in my drawers. I feel bad throwing it out, babe. <laughs> no one can use it. Okay, whatever. Yeah, I think it's just because our the, the layout of our house is very, right? So you can't really tell the space that we have. And our rooms are so tiny. Like, you can only put, like, a twin bed in every room. If not, like, that's it. So we do live in a small space. Mm -hmm. it, we do. do this you is wanna... ultra small, though. All right, I'm changing the topic, but you want to know something crazy that, like, I took out way out of perspective? Okay, when stuff, are you get, like, strawberries, right, and, like, fruits, they go bad, you throw them away, right? Do you, did you realize, like, God did this thing to, like, some, to most uh, fruits, vegetables, and, like, produce that when it goes bad, you could put it in use for another thing? Yeah. Okay, so you can't hear you, but. No. <laughs> okay, so, for example, like, uh, grapes. Okay, a grape, you have it in your fridge, it gets spoiled, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but you can make wine out of the spoiled grapes. And raisins. And raisins. You could like with milk, you can make cheese. I was listening to a podcast the other day and I was like, how did I not take this into perspective? Like everything's perfectly thought out. Like things can go bad and it becomes something else. Also, with all your other food, you can make dirt. Like compost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so cool, dude. And I never had this in my mind. I'm like, okay, I, I see cheese. Okay, that's just cheese. But here's a way that we can tie this into our life right now. Ready? Let's do it. This van life has taught us so much about. Um, being wasteful and really using all of the resources that you can and how you don't need as much stuff to live, right? Because we have been living out of a compost compost toilet for the past four days and we'll continue to live like that and we're just fine. Yeah. And our, it's a compost toilet. So you could basically, you're, you're it's all useful, right? We have been literally using one tank of water underneath our van for our shower, for our sink, for everything, right? And at home, we'll take like an hour shower. Isn't that crazy? Like, I don't even preheat my, I mean, I preheat my water sometimes for 10 minutes and yeah. it's just running. And here, you jump around in cold water till it gets warm because guess what? You don't have enough. Mm. Everything we've been using, like, are smashed ass black avocados because <laughs> we don't have anything else. So I think this whole experience 
has really taught us a lot about like that you don't need as much to live. Like we literally, right, turn off the water after every brush, okay? Turn it on, take it out, brush your entire teeth all the way. You spit and then you rinse your toothbrush and that's it. Like, And, I, and I'm used to hearing the uh-huh. and brushing at the same time. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? That's so crazy. So much stuff like making sure that we turn off all of our lights as soon as we're done using them because our power, right? All of this stuff that I feel like you're not very mindful about at any other place, like this really teaches you to really, you know, be mindful about it. And honestly, like not even just here, but to all of the farms that we've visited ever, they never let anything go to waste. It, like they make their own dirt. Like they'll do they'll, everything. They use everything. And it's so crazy that as people, you're, we're so wasteful. Wasteful, like super. We're so fucking wasteful. And we don't even realize it because I had no clue. Like we take everything for granted, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, I had no idea. I don't know. I feel like that's super selfish of us because we can, we can maximize our resources and give the extra resources to other people in need and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Yeah, even like our, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Like our groceries, we have fit all of our food in that little mini fridge. It's like a our <laughs> fridge is kind of like the size of a, a drink cooler. It is actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's our entire fridge. The size of a drink cooler. And then and when we go to Costco, we get like 20 of everything. Mm-hmm. And then we don't even use like we use like probably 50 to, 50 to 70% yeah. of our produce. So it's crazy because we literally have been using... I mean, we have milk, we have eggs, we don't have cheese, but we have butter. And, and my point is that we've been self-sufficient through that for four days, and we still have enough food in there to last us like at least another three. So it's crazy the way that you start to see how wasteful you really are and how like... It's humbling. We're very blessed to have everything that we do because we have been just fine in here with this little propane tank. Because guess what? We just use the propane Cook the egg and then turn it off fast. Don't waste anything. Don't let your pan heat up for fucking 20 minutes. Nope. As soon as you start seeing the water bubble a little bit, that's boiling. Drop your noodles in. Like, you're just very, very knowledgeable of everything. Because if you run now, you tough luck. You're out. Like, you're, you're done. That's it. Yeah. So it's crazy. We have so little, but we make it feel like we have everything. And it's just like a different experience. And I like this. I feel like going home, if I take a 10-minute 10, 10 shower, I'm, I'm like wasting too much water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy. So this this experience has been very awesome and honestly very eye-opening and so much fun because it, I feel like I've never really felt tied down to anywhere ever in my entire life. Like, I feel like I've always been kind of like, eh, wherever life takes us, like, you know. But doing this really made me realize, like, hey, like, I don't need to be in California. I don't need to be anywhere. We could be everywhere at once. Dude, I love, I love exploring, especially with you because, like, you're my, I feel like you're my eyes and my ears, and I'm just like, I'm just the the legs just walking, mm-hmm. <clears throat> walking, <laughs> like I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like the legs walking, like you're the entire like the whole thing, right? So everywhere we're going, I'm just I'm like following. All right, let's do it, let's do it. It's so much fun, and we've been really going with the flow this whole trip. Just kind of like, where are we sleeping tonight? Because our our plans are completely ruined by, by the national parks. Yeah, they ruined everything, but it's okay because honestly, we've still been having such a fun time. And we're going to continue to have a fun time. We have so much left to explore. Please let us know where we should go here in Salt Lake because I'm very, very excited to explore more of Utah. We'll be here for a few days, and then we'll start heading out to Idaho and Oregon and then back to Cali. But let us know any good spots that we for sure need to try because this podcast is going to take us a long time to upload. So we need to go to a cafe right now to get Wi-Fi to be able to upload this. If you know what has the best Wi-Fi, let us know as well. Maybe your house has Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can let us use your house Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> let us know. Anyway. That's going to wrap up today's podcast. I know it's a short one, but we have a lot of roads to hit. So we're yeah, going to leave. Before it starts snowing, because then we're going <laughs> to <up> literally. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, listening to our podcast, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.